welcome to this quick demo that shows you how to code an eye tracking video. As you can see here, I got a video of a very famous game called Simon. And now we want to code the different activities that can be seen on that video. So one of those activities is that the lights start to light. Another activity is what this person is doing here. And the third activity we're interested in is for sure the gaze cursor, where the gaze cursor is pointing to. Now, this means we have three different, what we call classes that we're going to record. And within each class, we will have different codes. So classes, for example, let me open the previously made definition file here. So, uh, hang on, sorry, I need to open this here. Simon, yes, here we are. Now, we have a class, for example, called Stimulus. And within Stimulus, we have the codes red, blue, green, yellow. We have a class Push. Within Push, we have also uh, blue, yellow, green, red. So this person can push the buttons. And we have a class called Gaze. And within Gaze, we have yellow, red, blue, green, this center when the person is looking at the center and the off code when the person is looking somewhere around on the table or the gaze cursor cannot be seen. Now, as you can imagine, this will be extremely difficult to code everything at the same time. This is what I want to show in this quick tour that you can simply focus on one single code or one single class and then rewind the video and refine the previously made codings by coding another class, rewind the video and refine those codings again by adding the codes of a next class. So first of all, we would like to focus on the stimulus. So we have the codes here, E, L, N, O. Uh, we can use those keyboard keys to just push the key on the keyboard when this specific behavior uh, occurs or this specific activity occurs here. And for this purpose, I'm going to switch my coding mode, which can be found here behind the settings button. And I want to use the press and hold mode, which makes it simple for me just to keep the key pressed as long as a specific red, green, red or blue light is, um, is lighting. So I switch to the lock new events mode and I want to see my codes. This is easy for me to remember this. So um, you could also use, for example, three different coding definition files and always use the same keys for the same uh, codes. This would be much nicer here now. But anyhow, let's keep those E, L, N, O just for demo now. Rewind the video, let it play. Um, uh, so I just want to play with the data um, quickly. Sorry, the video paused here. So green. Now. <coughs> As you can see, this is interesting. You made some coding um, mistakes. That's why I simply mark those events and cut them out. So that's a real life example. And this is what is uh, the intention of this demo to show you really how you can work with the software, even if you make some mistakes during the coding process. Now I have those four events coded here. They are not correct in this case, but it's just, just a demo. I want to show you on the timeline chart how this looks like. I create a new coding archive called Simon. And now you can see here on the timeline the different codes and here have the stimuli being given. Now let's assume that we code the whole video by using this procedure. Now uh, I rewind the video and focus on the gaze. With the gaze, it's interesting here. 
I uncheck the present hold mode because this is what I'm going to show you here the gaze within this class here of yellow, red, blue, center, and green is within uh, all the codes are within one exclusion list. I call this exclusion list some, simply one. You can uh, also call it A, B, C, or whatsoever. So this means those codes exclude each other during coding process. That means when I start the code and I start another code, for example, I switch from yellow to center, then the start of the center will automatically end the yellow coding. So this allows me to very quickly code through the video and also have assigned codes to 100% of the time. I've closed it window, I log new events, and now this is what I said, I focus on the gaze codes only. So I'll read it, rewind it. So this person is looking at different places here. And as you can see in the background, here Interact is recording those new events. And each of those events, when I move this window here, you will see it. Each new event will close the previous one. Let's say that's it here. There's still open codings left, yes, because I didn't end this last code here. So we convert into events, yes. Now, those codes have been recorded in this column here. I can move the column to be the first one, so we can better see what's happening here. Now I can also make a double click on this code, and you will see it play again and again and again. Uh, as you can see here, this was not correct, so I can switch to refine events and instead of red now because this was here the, the blue one tick the blue button and I'm sorry this was push here we are um, yeah and now the blue code is added in here you could also just enter anything uh, manually but it doesn't make really sense if you have predefined those codes so if you take a look at the timeline chart you see now we get much more information in here and I would like to now show you the real made coding on that um, video so that's the Simon demo act and now if you take a look at the chart, you see that's the real happening um, of that video. You can push this button here and you get the full statistics. So I see the absolute count for gaze to center, for example, happened 10 times, gaze to the blue one, 13, gaze to the green one, 11, and so on. If I take a look at the stimuli, for example, the blue stimulus was given 16 times, the green stimulus 10, red one, 4, and as you can see here, it's interesting because the yellow one is not, uh, not, was not given at all, but this person now was looking for example stimulus blue 16 times, um, and the gaze was only there for 13 times. Now, I think it's much, uh, what is more interesting is the percentage over time, because then you can also see, for example, how often this person was watching a specific um, part. Now, for example, this person was watching the blue button for a long time, so for 43% of the time, and the red one only for 10%. Now, whenever you click in the chart, the video is automatically also going to this point in time, and this allows you to see what's uh, or to navigate between the the codings and the video you can also zoom in on the chart let me pick this one here now you can zoom in and get a very
quick um, turnaround between data and the original video. So the, the things that I wanted to demonstrate in here is that you can define different kinds of codes. For example, we define the stimulus code here. They have not been defined as being exclusive because that's not necessary here because the stimuli um, are not happening one after the other immediately. So we simply want to use the, the present hold mode to um, code those stimuli. The push button, we didn't code it right now, but as you can see here, the push button is interesting uh, because we unchecked this duration checkboxes here because the push activity has no duration. It's just a point in time when this person is pushing a specific button. Also again here, within the gaze, all the gaze codes are mutually exclusive because this person can only um, watch a certain thing at a time and that's why we use this. This makes um, our coding process easier because we do not necessarily need to add for each event a start and an end um, code or we do not need to push this code twice for start and end because we can simply push each code for recording the start and the start will automatically be the end of the previous code within this exclusion group. So that's it. I hope this was interesting for you and hope to see you next time on one of the other demos. Thank you.